once came to Jesus by night to ask him the way of salvation and light. The master made answer in words true and plain, ye must be born again. So I encourage you. I encourage you as Paul encourages you. Evangelize the message. Seek God's favor first. Because if you seek his favor, you'll have what's important. Ye must be born again. Good morning, and welcome to the Bible Study Pal podcast. I'm Greg Circle, the preacher for the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. The goal of this public reading of this portion of Scripture is to spark thoughts for discussion in the midweek Bible study and prepare for the Book of the Month sermon series that goes through 2023. If you have any thoughts or questions that come to mind during the reading, type them in the comment section below. I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Let's get into the reading. Welcome to Bible Study Pal for Monday, March 6, 2023. The book of the month is Galatians, and the chapters of the week are chapters 1 and 2. Episode 2, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Whom do you serve? In the Legacy Standard Bible, we read in verses 6 through 10 of Galatians chapter 1, I marvel that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to the gospel we have proclaimed to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is proclaiming to you a gospel contrary to what you have received, let him be accursed. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men... I would not be a slave of Christ. Paul is concerned that the Galatian Christians have with such speed deserted him. They started following other teachers who proclaimed another story of good news, which wasn't a story of good news at all. And so Paul reminds them, and will continue to remind them, that this fake good news is to be accursed. The question to ask is, who is this glorifying? You read the news and you find some stories that make you smile. Stories abound of people who do heroic things. A bus driver pulls a disembarking student back into the bus, saving them from being hit by a car passing curbside, and is recognized by her school district for it. A fifth grade student has a fundraiser to pay off his classmates' past due lunch bills. Those are wonderful news stories that make you smile. Good news. But then after you think about those stories just a little bit, you have to ask, why though? Why do we need to put the stress of watching out for other drivers on the bus driver? Why does a child have to solve the problem of child hunger? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm glad these individuals were in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. But why? In our culture, we seem to focus too much on ourselves as the center of our own universes. No one else really matters to us. We want the attention. We want the glory. There seems to be a lack of shame and certainly too much emphasis on attention. But instead of focusing on ourselves, why not focus on just doing the right thing? Focus on doing what is right. Following the golden rule. Doing unto others as we would want them to do to us. Then we wouldn't have to worry about a bus driver pulling a student back onto the bus. We wouldn't have to worry about a child thinking of a way to solve a problem of his classmates, his fellow children. Instead, if we just did the right thing, thought about not ourselves but others, if we would just follow Jesus, our society would be so much better. And perhaps that is why Paul is focusing on evangelism here and why we should focus on evangelism as well. In this letter, Paul uses two different verbs for the preaching slash proclamation of the gospel. There's a word that means to preach, keruso, and this is what a messenger of a king would do as he calls out the proclamation of the king. He says, hear ye, hear ye. Paul uses that word twice in Galatians, chapter 2, verse 2, and chapter 5, verse 11. But more often than that, eight times in fact, six in chapter one alone, is the word euangelizo, 
And it is the word from which we get evangelize. And so we translate, or rather transliterate, the word evangelize. So if we go back and reread the paragraph, replacing the words with evangelize instead, we read, I marvel that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another, only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should evangelize to you contrary to that which we have evangelized to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so I say again now, if anyone is evangelizing you contrary to what you received, let him be accursed. I want you to notice how the structure of the sentences work out there. And there's a there's a couple of ways that evangelism happens in that paragraph, in just those two verses, specifically verses 8 and 9. Before I get into that, I want to talk about a video on a topic totally unrelated to what we consider religion. The presenter was talking about a bad experience he had with a company that he used to highly recommend. He put it this way, I evangelized this company, and I thought, That's a weird way to use that word, where you evangelize the message instead of evangelizing your audience. But the thing is, that's really the right way to think about it. We talk about evangelizing the community, but that's not really the way it works. Seven times out of eight in this book, the evangelism is done to the message. The message is the direct object of the verb evangelize, and the recipient is the indirect object. Only once is the audience evangelized. The audience is the direct object of the evangelism. 52 times out of 62 in the New Testament are also examples of the evangelism being done to the message. Whether that message is Jesus Christ, that message is the faith, that message is the grace of God, we see that most of the time the evangelism is done to the message. The message is the direct object. Now, what about the few times, the 10 or 12 times that the audience is the direct object of the evangelism? It seems to me, as I look through these examples, when the audience is the object of the evangelism, it's when the audience has actually listened. So to say that we evangelize the community really only works if the community listens. The main point that I would like to get out is that The evangelism that we do is really the evangelism of the message. And that's what Paul is saying as well. If people listen, that's great. That is outstanding. That is what we want. But the important thing for us to remember is that we are not seeking the favor of men, but of God. We're not striving to please men, but instead we're striving to please God. We are to be the slaves of Christ. So who are you trying to impress? Are you seeking to impress men or God? Which are you trying to serve? If you serve Christ and redirect everyone's attention from you to Him, you will end up serving both. Then the righteous will answer Him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? The king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, To the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. To the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, and specifically verses 37 through 40 and 44 and 45. You will end up impressing both. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the sufferings of Christ, keep on rejoicing, so that also at the revelation of his glory you may rejoice with exultation. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. 
because the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or evildoer or a troublesome meddler. But if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. 1 Peter 4, 11 through 16. But if you are only trying to serve and impress men, gaining notoriety for yourself, then you miss the point of service. And as Jesus says in his Sermon on the Mount, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. So I encourage you. I encourage you as Paul encourages you. Evangelize the message. Seek God's favor first. Because if you seek His favor you'll have what's important. Ye must be born again, again. Ye must be born again, again. We invite you to join us as we worship our Lord and study His Word each Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m. for Bible classes for all ages, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for two distinct worship services, and each Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for another chance to study and discuss God's Word. Occasionally, we may alter the p.m. service times for a special event. Please check palmyrachurchofchrist.org or our Facebook page for the schedule for the week. If you have any questions or would like to have a Bible study in person or by correspondence, email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org or call 812-364-6215. Thank you for listening.